Good morning. We're very happy that you're here to worship with us at Our Savior Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader, and we are located right next to the Purdue University campus on the corner of Fowler and Vine. If you would like to join us via Zoom, please send us an email to info at oslu.th.org. That's info at osluth.org. We will send you the Zoom link, which includes our bulletin. And you can stick around after the service for our virtual coffee hour. We would love to get you know, to know you better. This week, we hear from one of the assistants to the bishop from our Senate office, Pastor Heather Apel. Pastor Apel will speak about the encounter with baby Jesus, Simeon, and Anna in the temple as they introduce a new sense of anticipation and excitement in the Jesus story. The expectation shifts from the various angelic announcements and the birth of Jesus to a foreshadowing of what this baby will one day do. Join us as we focus on proclaiming God's love and celebrate the birth of Christ. One God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life we have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you, for the sake of the one who comes to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ made known to all people, with all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Please join us in singing Good, Friend, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, verses 2 and 3. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10 through 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to uh, say Psalm 148 with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the, the Lord from the heavens. heavens. Praise God, God in the heights. heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them, them a law that shall not pass away. away. Praise, Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and, and praise, praise for all faithful, faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. It's good to see you all. I'm going to ask the kids to gather around. This is something a little bit out of order today, but that's all right. A little bit different going into our Christmas season. And I'm going to ask... Bob, to go ahead and unmute. Um, so ask your parents to unmute you because I got a question for you and I want to be able to hear your um, answers. So I see some of you are getting ready, right? Okay, and awesome. So the question I have for you, and I just want to also let people on Facebook know, um, right now the children's sermon, I, we unfortunately are not able to show this over um, our Zoom feed or our Facebook feed for you to enjoy, but right now I'm actually interacting with, with the children of the congregation. So if you see a little bit more of my shiny growing forehead, that's, that's the reason why. Um, all right, so my question for the children this morning is, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? And if so, what is that? Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to be a ninja turtle. A ninja turtle. That is awesome. And it's awesome that you know that you want to be that ninja turtle already. There's some people out there that really aren't sure. It took me until I was like 35 to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. But just like you... I have a son who knew right after he was in his first play that he wanted to be an actor. 
And that is just wonderful that people know when and they, what they want to be at an early age. And then they go out and, and they do that. So, do you think Jesus as a child knew what he wanted to be? Maybe not, but maybe. We definitely know in our gospel lesson coming up that other people knew from the time of his birth he, who he was and what he was going to become. In the Bible, in our second uh, chapter of Luke, we will hear here pretty soon, there are two prophets. Prophets are special people that are led by God and can uh, help us see God in, in other people. So there's these two prophets. One was named Simeon and the other one was named Anna. And they were told that Jesus would come and that he would be the Messiah, which means the chosen one, to help all of us, to love us, and to, to show us how to love others. So when he saw Jesus, he praised God. He gave thanks to God because he knew he was seeing that chosen one, the one who would come and bring God's love to the whole world. And Anna, the same thing, when she saw Jesus, she praised God, she gave thanks to God because she recognized the child, Jesus, as the one who was sent by God. In the story, it tells us the child was growing and was becoming strong in the spirit and being filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon them. And this is what we want for each and every one of you, of our children, in this faith community, that you grow strong and be filled with wisdom to make good choices, that you may not know what you you may not know what you want to be when you grow up right now but God knows and God loves you and you have God's favor and that favor is upon you each and every one of you let us pray good and gracious God you are awesome and we love you we thank you for showing us what it is that we like to do and we ask you to Support us in learning how to do that for the rest of our lives. Help us to grow in you. Thank you for the grace and the favor you put on each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, again, we were going to hear now our second reading in the gospel coming from our um, assistant to the bishop, Pastor Heather Apel. And... Um, the Senate has done a set of recordings ever since the pandemic has started to use um, periodically during the church year. So we chose this Sunday to, to hear from our um, assistant to the bishop, Pastor Heather April. Merry Christmas. God's blessings to you on this first Sunday of Christmas from the staff of the Indiana Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I'm Pastor Heather Apel, and I serve as assistant to the bishop here in the Indiana Kentucky Synod. A reading from Galatians, the fourth chapter. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, 
a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him into his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that he will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Emmanuel, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are only two days past Christmas. Do you know where baby Jesus is? I know that some people have already begun to take down their trees put the ornaments and nativity sets and decorations away, and are looking ahead to the good things that we hope will come soon in 2021. The stores have already begun to put their Christmas items on clearance and are putting out the Valentine's Day cards and candy. But it's not that way in the church. The season of Christmas lasts 12 days. From Christmas Day, until the start of Epiphany on January 6th. Sometimes it seems like we spend weeks or even months getting ready for Christmas. And then as soon as it comes, it's over in a flash. Perhaps that's why the church celebrates not just a day, but a season of Christmas, to be countercultural to the world that wants to rush through the celebration once it arrives and instead, we linger in the season a little longer. Today's gospel reading is the after story of Christmas that is rarely included in the dramatic telling of this annual narration. Within the last few days, many of us heard the nativity story, though perhaps in an online or socially distanced way, that we previously never could have imagined for Christmas worship. Yet I'm guessing that however we heard that familiar story this year, it stopped with the scene of baby Jesus in the manger, surrounded by angels declaring, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Perhaps Silent Night was sung, but rather than being bathed in the candle glow from a sanctuary filled with people, it might have been sung at home 
with just our families gathered around a candle-filled Advent wreath. Regardless of what our Christmas celebrations were like just a few days ago, we have 10 more days to rejoice in this gift of Emmanuel, God with us. Today's reading reminds us that there is more to share about the birth and purpose of Jesus in the world than simply tell that nativity scene. In Luke 2, we hear some elements of Jesus' storyline that aren't present in Mark or Matthew or John. This account of his early visit to the temple not only portrays Mary and Joseph as people of Israel, but the circumcision and presentation of Jesus at the temple leaves no question that Jesus is an observant Jew, even from birth. Simeon and Anna are characters known only to Luke's gospel, which highlight that long-awaited prophecy, which has now been fulfilled in Jesus. Their encounter with baby Jesus in the temple helped to introduce a new sense of anticipation and excitement into the story of Jesus. As the narration shifts from the various angelic announcements around the birth of Jesus, to a foreshadowing of what this baby will one day do. In the words of Simeon to Mary, Jesus is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed. This song of praise to God by Simeon is an odd one to be sung in front of these new parents as it is essentially a song about Simeon's own death now that he has seen their son. And then in his final blessing to Mary, he says that a sword will pierce her own heart too. Even at this early stage of Jesus' life, we see how glory and anguish, beauty and sorrow, gladness and opposition are all contained in this one child. When God came down to earth, Jesus experienced the whole breadth of human life, joys and sorrows, all that is wonderful and difficult. God became Emmanuel, God with us, not just for Christmas Day or for the 12 days of this season, but for every day of our life, through the ups and downs, our hopes and fears, our successes and disappointments, the accomplishments and failures, all of it. God could have used some other medium to enter into the world. God's revelation could have taken on any form. However, God chose to use the same form that was created by God so many years ago. It was through human flesh that God reached out to the world. When this exchange happened between divine and human, something new took place. The ordinary physical realities of our bodies took on a new potential because God had become incarnate among us. God appeared in the mundane, the common everyday stuff that makes up every one of us. As this time of year has us focusing on God coming down to earth as a human, it reminds us of a story that I read several years ago. It was a snowy Christmas Eve, and a farmer's wife was taking their children to Christmas Eve service in the farm community in which they lived. She asked him to come, but he refused. That Christmas story, it's nonsense, he said. Why would God lower himself to come down to earth as a man? It's just ridiculous. So she and the children left, and he stayed home. A while later, the winds grew stronger, and the snow turned into a blizzard. As the man looked out the window, all he saw was a blinding snowstorm. No sooner had he sat down to relax before the fire for the evening, when he heard a loud thump, something had hit his window. Then there was another thump. He tried to look out, but 
couldn't really see more than a few feet. When the snow let up a little bit later, he ventured outside to see what could have been hitting his window. In the field near his house, he saw a flock of wild geese. Apparently they had been flying south for the winter and must have gotten caught in the snowstorm and now could not go on. They were lost and stranded on his farm with no food or shelter. They were flapping their wings, just kind of flying around his field in low circles, blindly with no direction. And a couple of them must have gotten off track and had flown into his window. The farmer felt sorry for the geese and he, he wanted to try and help them. He knew his barn would be a great place for them to stay. It was warm and safe and they could spend the night there and wait out the storm. So the farmer walked over to the barn and opened the doors wide and then watched and waited, hoping that the geese would notice these open barn doors and go inside. But the geese just fluttered around aimlessly and didn't really seem to notice the barn or realize what it could mean for them. The farmer tried to get their attention, but that just seemed to scare them and move them even further away. He went into the house and came back out with some bread, broke it up and made a breadcrumb trail leading into the barn, but they still didn't catch on. Now he was growing frustrated. He got behind them and tried to kind of shoo them into the barn, but that only got them more scared and they scattered in every direction except the barn. Nothing he did could get them to go into the barn where they would be warm and safe. Why don't they follow me, he exclaimed. Can't they see this is the only place where they can survive the storm? He thought for a minute and realized that they just wouldn't follow a human. If only I were a goose, then I could save them, he said out loud. Then he had an idea. He went into the barn, got one of his own geese, and carried it in his arms as he circled around back the flock of the wild geese. Then he released it. His goose flew straight through the flock and into the barn, and one by one the other goose geese followed it to safety. He stood there for a moment as the words he had spoken a few minutes earlier replayed in his mind. If only I were a goose, then I could save them. Then he thought about what he had said to his wife earlier. Why would God want to be like us? That's ridiculous. And suddenly it all made sense. That is what God had done. We were like the geese, blind, lost, perishing. And God sent his son to become like us so he could show us the way and save us. Simeon and Anna knew that God's salvation story included a Messiah who would be the redemption of Israel, the glory of God's people, the one to save us. Their messages and witness to God at work in the world demonstrate once again that God uses ordinary, everyday people and things to share the good news. Simple things such as bread and wine and water. The story of Jesus' birth and early life in Luke make room for a variety of messengers and avenues for the gospel message. It makes room for women and men. It makes room for youth and elders. It makes room for the poor, disappointed, marginalized and unsuspecting. The good news of Jesus' birth is something that we can all share as we carry this good news of God's salvation and liberation and acceptance to those around us. As we prepare to enter into a new year, the good news of Christmas that we carry is that regardless of what 2021 may bring, we can be confident in Emmanuel, a God who came as one of us and continues to keep God's promises, that indeed God is still walking with us as we are equipped and encouraged and empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
God is with us every single day of our lives, throughout all of life's ups and downs, granting us peace and confidence to face the new year and each day, and leading us to thanksgiving for all that God has done and is still doing to us, with us, and through us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you please join us in song as we sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please join us in professing our faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that waste, wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Especially bless the heroes on the front lines battling COVID-19. Doctors, nurses, first responders, and others whose work is overlooked yet essential. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence, especially Herb, Candy, Jason, Phil and Shirley, Rosalie, Jeff, Denise, Pastor Judy, Barb, Tom, Donna, Helmut and Carol, John, Kim, Joe, Lynn, Connor and Mason, Nancy, Alex, Victoria, Jennifer, Jeanette, Al, Nancy and Emily, Steve, and the family and friends of Tom. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God, according to your word. For all your saints we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Take a moment and share that peace with one another, whether that's in your... Uh, your room or via technology as we continue into the meal portion of our service we begin with the offering and we want to say thank you um, as always for your generosity to continual your continual support of the ministry at our savior lutheran church and purdue lutheran ministries it's because of your generosity that we are able to reach out into this community and make a difference in people's lives it's what you provide for us to be able to do that. So thank you so very much. You can continue to bring those um, checks in, drop them off by the, in the office or mail them in or use the QR code. Um, however you choose to do that, God bless you in your generosity. Let us prepare for communion. Thank you. 
gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you for the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope from his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, full of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So come to this table which now extends into your homes. You who have faith and you who would like to have faith. You have been here often and you who have not been here for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
receive this blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Will you please join us in song again, singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Join me in the masking prayer. Lord, as I put on my mask, let it be a filter for my words to pass through as well as my breathing. Let through only those words which are helpful breathings of love and stop those things in my speech that will be harmful to others. Protect me also, O Lord, from the harmful things others may say to me. Help me to realize that I may be a carrier of bitterness, thoughtlessness, judgment, and prejudice without realizing, and that some people are more word vulnerable than others. Give me grace to love those who cannot or will not filter to protect others, and special grace to them because they go through the world unprotected. Help me to be prepared to adapt and brave and transparent so that all may have a chance to hear. Lord, be a mask in my mouth and pin my ears forward for listening. Amen. A blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, who sent the shepherds with good news and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you for joining us. We hope that this worship experience is something that will brighten your week. Sometimes, when we think about the glory of God and all the incredible things God has done, we forget that God uses the simple things. Water, bread, wine, the very common items we sometimes overlook, but yet are so essential to remind us of God's love. God's love shown through these simple items and each other. Remind us, God is near. Through the Holy Spirit, God gets us through the ups and downs of life, granting us peace and confidence to face the new year and each day. A quick note, I'll be on vacation next week and Dale, our faith formation director, will be here to lead worship, preach, and preside. I will see you in a couple weeks. May God's love be shown to you today in the simple joys. May God bless you this week in all that you do. Peace be with you.